Okay. I always mention this example. If I give you two million pounds, what would you say to me at least? Thank you. Would you remember me all the time? Two million pounds is a big man. Correct. Okay. Now I will give you two million pounds <laughs> on the condition give me your two eyes. Would you do that? Say that again. I will give you two million pounds yeah. on the condition give me your two eyes. Would you do that? Is it quite honest? <laughs> no. No way, no go. Because <laughs> your eyes is more valuable than two yeah. million pounds. So why don't you thank and be grateful the one who gave you two eyes for free and remember him all the time? See, that's what Allah mentioned the Quran. If you try to count Allah's blessings and Allah's favor upon you, you will never be able to do so. If someone comes with a gun or a knife try to kill us, there's two things we do. Either we fight back to defend ourselves or we run away. Why? Because the life that we have is so dear to us. What about the one who gave it to us for free? So that's the first one. The first one that you and I, we know that I should be grateful to my creator. But the question I will ask you, if you want to buy a gift for your mother, sister, would you buy a gift that you love or your mother love? She loves. Now we know that I should be grateful to my creator and I should worship him. The question, how? The way he loves or the way we love? The way he loves. That's why, based upon the creator's wisdom and mercy and justice, he chose to put amongst us. And he sent the prophets and messengers to teach us about our purpose of life. Against his death, the creator of the heavens and the earth and that which is between them knows some people are going to claim to be prophets of God, but they are liars. So how can we differentiate between who is a true prophet and who is a false prophet? Okay? How can we know this man is coming to he's been chosen by the creator? We can choose we can differentiate so easily. Okay, one of the criteria the prophets and messengers are known to be trustworthy and truthful and honest amongst the nations. Their society. For example, sister, if someone is known to us to be a liar, evil man, a liar, and he comes to me and to you and he says, You know what? I'm a prophet of God. Would you believe him? I think well, you're the biggest liar. And we will have an excuse before the Creator to reject that prophet. You see? So the Creator, when He chose them, He chose those who are known. Do you know about Jesus, Moses, Abraham? Yeah. Okay. How do I have to speak about them? If I establish Prophet Muhammad as a true prophet, logic dictates you should believe what he came with. Why? Because you and I, we know the Creator will not choose a liar to convey the message. So if a Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet of God, therefore he will not come with lies and deception. He will come with the truth. Now let me ask you a question. Who knows the future in details? Except God. It's a logical argument. For example, if I want to make this cup, no one knows about the cup in details which is an idol. That's why I made it. Okay, that's it. Prophet Muhammad from the criteria that Allah has given him for you and I, everyone here, to differentiate and to know he's a true prophet, he spoke about the future. He said there will come a time when you see the barefoot Arab man competing in building tall buildings. When the Prophet Muhammad mentioned a sister back in those days which is 1400 years ago, the people were not known to build tall buildings. Those who were known, the Persians, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Greeks. Let me ask you this question, maybe you know. Where is the tallest building in the world? Dubai? Dubai. Dubai, since the 50 years ago, was a pure desert. Let alone 1400 years ago. So how a man that lived 1400 years ago knew about something is occurring, taking a place Brother, you speak and say, a girl taking place in front of our eyes. You don't have to be a Muslim, or you have to, to buy a Muslim glasses to see it. Everyone can see it and notice it. Another prophecy, Prophet Muhammad said, there will come a time when the Muslims will take over Constantinople. You know Constantinople? Constantinople is Turkey now, Istanbul. Yes, the Muslims took over Constantinople 800 years after Prophet Muhammad's migration, after he died, they saw Salam. So how we knew that? Another thing, he comes with the miracle of the Quran. Sister, I've been asking this question to many people. Maybe you have the answer. Hopefully. Okay. Do you know any book, the size of the Quran? You know, like this. Yeah? It has been memorized by hundreds 
million of people who doesn't know, speak the language of the book. You know, in a book like that. To make clear to you, imagine you yeah. and I will memorize a book in Chinese language, yeah. but guess what? We don't even speak Chinese. It doesn't happen. That's why I'm saying, how is that possible? Thank you. Allah mentioned the Quran 1400 years ago. We have made the Quran easy to be memorized. This statement cannot be the statement of Prophet Muhammad. Why? The statement of someone who knows about his creation. Who knows about his creation. The statement of someone who knows about his creation. For Allah, for, for Prophet Muhammad to come with this passage in the verse to say this book, it will be memorized by everyone, Arab and non-Arabs. No one will say this statement except the, the Creator. There is no book on the face of the earth. It has been memorized by people who doesn't speak the language of the book except the Quran. You go to Africa, to Asia, to America, children at the age of 10, 11, memorize the Quran word by word. Letter by letter, guess what? They don't even speak the language. How? Sometimes some of them they do speak Arabic language and they will make mistakes in the grammar, they will make mistakes in the pronunciation. But when they read the Quran, they read it perfectly. To make it clear to you, imagine you bring me a book, uh, uh, poems of Shakespeare, yes, and I'm reading it perfectly. Good pronunciation, pronouncing the lyrics correctly. Then you bring me English dictionary perfectly. Then I start speaking to you no more. Me coming, no tomorrow, me no going. Me no here. You think, no, no, you're taking a mic. You just read Shakespeare's poem perfectly. Now you tell me, me, where are you? No coming tomorrow. You, you see? That, that, it's, it's a funny, that's just the reality. The Quran, that is one of the miracles of the Quran. Of course, there's many miracles. The prophecies, one of the prophecies Allah mentioned the Quran, that Islam will become widespread. Even disbelievers, the enemies of Islam dislike it. Because not every disbeliever, is the enemy of Islam. Allah is speaking about the enemy of Islam who try to stop Islam. And we know the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth is Islam. Who's doing the job? Muslim countries are weak. As a Muslim to are weak, it's Allah. I mentioned that 1400 years ago. Sister, what I have mentioned to you, does it make sense? Is it clear to you? Worship one God? You say, yes, I should worship God. What you have to remember, sister, is what all of us here, reminder. Allah always reminds us with the death that all mankind remember one day you have to leave this life. Many people, we are, especially in this society, we have to be just, not just this society, worldwide. We are so busy, okay? And we are forgetting about death. Allah sent the Quran, say, O Muhammad, inna al minu, fa inna Say to them the death that you should escape from, to run away from surely will meet you and you will return to Allah and Allah will inform you of that you should do. I've never been Jamaica. I always mention Jamaica but you know I've never been Jamaica. Imagine now I want to travel to Jamaica. Any person wants to travel to Jamaica what you do if you don't know about the country you study beforehand. Is it a safe country? Of course it's safe but I'm just giving an example. Is it a cold country? Which currency they use? You have the foolish one the one who says what? Let me get there and I come to know. But guess what? Maybe when you get there, it's a dangerous country. That's what Allah told us all mankind. Use your intellect, use your brain, reflect that what the Prophet Muhammad came is the truth. So Islam is simple. That's the first one. It's called the testification and the testimony of Islam. That's how you become Muslim. When you say, I bear witness, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. Meaning that I accept and I profess to be grateful to my Creator, to worship my Creator. How? According to the will and to the wisdom of the Creator when he sent Prophet Muhammad. And as a Muslim who believe, if I was alive at the time of Jesus and I was, I was from the Israelites, the only way to get to God by following Jesus' teaching. Before Jesus, Moses. Before Moses, Abraham and there's many. So Islam, that's the first one. To accept Allah, Prophet Muhammad, second one, to establish the prayer. Five times a day, you pray, okay? Six, third one, to give charity. Fourth one, to fast the month of Ramadan. The fifth one, to go to Hajj, if you're able to do so. This is called the outward actions. My sister, I always say this, it's like a cake. If you eat the cake, all of it one time, what will happen to you? Feel sick, you wanna vomit, okay? In order for you to feel the sweetness of the cake, what you do? Bit by bit. Likewise, step by step. That's why the, our mother Aisha said, when the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was sent as a prophet in the beginning, the first thing he came with, that to tell them about Allah's right. 
and to worship Allah according to his prophet. So sister, if it makes sense to you and it's clear to you, what is stopping you to become Muslim? He doesn't agree with yeah. Um, I don't really know much about it. That's but based upon what I said so far, does it make sense? Um, yeah. Because you don't have to be a scholar in Islam to become a Muslim. You don't have to know everything. If the foundation is clear, look. That's why one, one, one of the signs of Islam, or one of the miracles of Islam, it goes in line with your natural inclination. That's why I ask you, you know naturally that you should worship your Creator. Correct? You should be grateful to Him. Okay? And without any doubt, all of us here, we want to have connection with our Creator. The one who provides for me, and for you, for your family. The other one, how? Of course, no. if you want to worship the Creator, you don't worship Him according to your feeling or my feeling. Because our feelings are different. So which one we know is the truth? Based upon the Creator's wisdom, He said the Prophets and Messengers. And Prophet Muhammad, how do we know he's a true Prophet? Again, the miracles that he came with, the prophecies that you can see. One of the prophecies that Prophet Muhammad mentioned about the, 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 what they call it, uh, uh, the cars, this hadith, the Prophet said it will come a time when the Arab Bedouins, they will stop utilizing the camel as a riding beast and they will utilize something as a box and they will be stopping outside the mosque with a woman wearing tight clothes and the hijab with the, what they call it, the camel hams. This never existed before. This is exactly what's happening now. You see Muslim sisters wearing the hijab like a camel hams. Prophet Muhammad spoke about this kind of dressing 1400 years ago. It's what the Arabs, their riding beast always is a camel. If they're not using the camel, Prophet Muhammad said they will use the box. And it's called mentioned that will be the cars. How look how specific and detailed. So what I will say to you, if it makes sense to you, I'm inviting you to Islam. It's a clear because there's nothing guaranteed in this life except death. My wife should become Muslim when she was 14. By herself, alhamdulillah. Naam. And uh, she said to me, like, you know, when she started reading about Islam, you know, the foundation, said, when the foundation was came to me, we became Muslim. Alhamdulillah, last time another woman became Muslim here is. Because what is Islam? Islam doesn't mean you're going to become Arab, we become Pakistani. No, Islam means is Arabic terminology, which means English to submit myself to my Creator. Would you not be happy to have a connection with your Creator? Without any doubt. And look, Islam makes logical sense. Creator, one. We don't believe three gods, one died. No, no. One God. The God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Jesus, and the God of everything. That which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sister, imagine you go to your house tonight, to your room, and you go sleep in your bedroom. While you're sleeping, someone comes and pick you up and take you to the cave or to the mountain and put you inside the cave. When you wake up, imagine you wake up in the middle of the night, how are you going to be? Maybe you go crazy. Yeah, maybe you go mental. Literally, you can go mental. You know what is worse than that? It's a death. Maybe you go sleep, or I go sleep, the next minute you wake up, you are in a different life. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Allah gave him the knowledge of the unseen. He said, when the son of Adam dies, you will go to a different life. And two angels will appear to him. And when they will ask him the questions, who is your Lord? Who used to worship me? If your life, you abandon the Creator, you spend your life on that which will not benefit you, then you'll be confused. The second question, what do you think about the man that was sent to you, Prophet Muhammad? Because Allah mentioned the Quran, Allah will never punish any people until the message has been conveyed to them. If the message be conveyed to you and you turn away from it, don't blame no one except yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Lakad kama awwala marra, wa ma wa Allah mentioned the Quran, on the day of resurrection Allah will say to you, or oh, when a death comes to you and you return, Allah says, you have returned to us just as we have created you in the beginning. And you have, you have left everything that which we have provided you with. So forget about everyone. Remember, you're going to die by yourself. And you're going to stand before the Creator by yourself. So if it stands clear to you, then after you start learning step by step. But it's better off for you to 
leave with a key, which is the foundation. And that's why I want to tell you, if it makes clear sense to you, and it goes in line with your sound reason and the natural inclination, then you should accept it. As for us here, maybe if you can hear I'm shy, I'm this and that, then trust me. And it's simple, what is, what is it? How you become Muslim? You don't have to fly or swim, you know? They have a witness. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a servant and the messenger of Allah. Then you step by step, you start learning. You see what I'm saying, sister? Yeah. Okay. Will you become Muslim? Um, I'm, I'm still, I still need to. You want to learn more? Yeah, Let me give you a book to read. No problem at all. Uh, I'm sorry, why are you doing this? Um, I want to ask a question. Okay. It's not actually my question, actually, it's that question. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You know, if you have any question, ask. I'm not a scholar by the way, but if I'm able to answer, I will be able. But you know, so you should, you should ask you if you have anything to ask, you can yeah, ask. It's actually yeah. a question. You watched one of your clips and you, you were having this conversation and you said something that, um, you know, when you repent, um, um, when you turn to a Muslim, you to Islam, yes. something like that, that God forgives you all your sins yes. in the past and everything, yes. except only one, and that one can let that you all individual. Yeah. Is that correct? It's correct. So well, the, the question, well, maybe logically or whatever, yeah. is that she was just asking, like, how can you forget to forgive someone, even if someone has been killing someone in the past, or this, all this sort of atrocities and all that, you can enable to actually forgive someone all that, but just you're owing somebody money, and that's what God will not forgive you. Right? No, no, uh, uh, what I will say, be clear. Uh, even the killing, because when you, when you repent, you repent that you want against anger, God crying. Likewise, one of the conditions of repent is to tell the guy sorry. So even the killing. But now, the person that's been killed, the person will become Muslim, you cannot go back to them sorry. You understand? Likewise, the death, and I'm not sure about the death also, imagine now you took money from someone and you to give it back to him. What's you now? now, if you don't know the person, what you can do, that you best what Christ mentioned, there's one way you can oh, make it up. Get that money and give it charity in the name of that, on behalf of that person. Okay, but on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it up for that person who has been killed because he's right still over you. But yeah, yeah, it's true, it's a good point. That's true. Doesn't mean because you become Muslim automatically Allah forgive you between what because you went against God's commandment but now there is between you and the person who's been killed on the day of judgment Allah is just because when the person did the crime he was doing it based upon ignorance he didn't know now he became Muslim he learned so Allah will make it up for that person yeah yeah, yeah. What is the other question you want to ask? Yeah, it's me. I want question, to ask another man. question now. Right. Yeah, go on. Personally, I don't know. I'm Muslim. I'm um, really um, one thing I don't understand is this. Do you, I want you to tell me what is this story about this stone in Mecca. I, I've had, I, I had about it, you know, but I, I have one source, but I'm not too sure. Someone said to me that um, I think the professor said that the, the stone was actually in, in, uh, in Jannah. In Jannah. Yeah. Down, yeah. Or maybe it's just a stone that's beautiful or something. I just wanted to. Yeah, it is a stone. That stone, that stone, that stone, that stone is, is, is from Jannah. Oh. Okay, about the black stone. So it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, from Jannah. Uh, yeah, it's true from okay. Jannah. And when we kiss the stone, we don't look. There's seven types of worship. Okay. I don't understand the worship part. That no, no, but, but it's good to clarify. It. I want to clarify yeah, that as well. Okay. As All I say, right. as a shay will be shay Sometimes you mention something, and that will relate something else. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So they say. You lot pray to, you lot worship the stone. We don't worship the black stone, first of all. Now, the black stone, we kiss it as an act of worship because it's from paradise, from uh, uh, honorable place, from a beloved place to us, okay? And Allah ibn Khattab, he already made it clear. When he kissed the black stone, he said, Mean, you don't harm, you, don't, you cannot harm me independently or benefitly, benefit me independently. Yes, there is a reward of kissing the black stone. Likewise, there is a reward when you kiss your mother's head. Doesn't mean because if I kiss my mother's head, I get a reward. Therefore, I worship my mother's head. Or if I kiss my mother's head, which is act of worship. If you do it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you kiss your mother's head. You understand? That is act of worship. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you get a reward for that. Doesn't mean you are worshiping your mother's head. You understand? 
That's one thing. But you know, I will ask you something. Yeah? Don't record that because I'm not, we're not no, 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 seriously, we're, no, no, seriously, we're we'll speaking about something else. You're a Christian missionary, but it's not about Christianity. Yeah. After Inshallah, because I spoke too many times. Sister, I don't want to make it like, you know, there's a hadith. But why I'm trying to insist in a bit, you know, there's a hadith Prophet Muhammad SAW said. لَإِنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعْمِ If Allah guides one person through you, yeah. it's better than the red she camel. The red she camel meaning the whole world. You know, like I'm Burgundy, not the narration, the whole world. So, I'm, can I ask you a question? Okay? My Allah forbids this stuff, but we have to be honest with ourselves. Before, to be honest with someone else. Be honest, ask ourselves this question. If you, my love forbid, imagine you go tonight and you die and God will resurrect you. What excuse would you have before God for not accepting this now? He said, Ash. No, I'm not here. Okay. He said, Ash. Ash. Hadu. Hadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Ilaha. Allah. Allah. Wa Ash Ash Hadu Hadu Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Rasul Rasul Allah Allah Which is I bear witness Yeah I bear there, witness There's no one Worthy of worship. Yeah, there's okay, no one. There's no one. Yeah. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Is the last messenger. Is the last messenger. And the servant of Allah. And, the servant. and of course, you believe Jesus to be a servant and the messenger of Allah. Yeah. Because you don't believe Jesus to be God or Son of God. We just make any sense. I'm very happy for you, sister. <laughs> Let me hug you, my brother. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, inshallah. I can hug you, but yeah. I hug my brother. Yeah. I'm very happy, <laughs> sister. Yeah. Wallahi, yeah. sister, you made my day. Wallahi is a big blessing that you don't understand. Look, Wallahi, my sister, Allah has chosen you amongst many people who are misled, who are lost. Allah chose you. Not because in need of you or me or of Him. Because Allah is the most merciful. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see a person is sincerely seeking the truth, Allah will guide him to the truth. 